designs the model automatically in Simulink. So this is a capability that's not available in MATLAB itself, but is available in Simulink. So if you have a Simulink model of any complexity within principle, you can automatically generate a linearized model. Remember, generating linearized models is not all that fun because if you have a differential equation that looks like this, then you may recall the linearized model looks like uh, this thing. I'm, I'm assuming x and u are scalar to make life easier. We talked about this in the class, right? If you want to find the linearized model, then you have to take this function, take the derivative with respect to x, evaluate it some steady state, which obviously you find by doing this. And then you have to do the same thing with u. And so if the function f is not too difficult to differentiate, then this is not too hard to do. But if the function f is really complex, or even worse, if this problem is multidimensional, so instead of one equation and one input, you have a problem that's like 20 equations, right? And 10 inputs. I don't know, I'm just making something up at this point. But if you had, you, so if you have one equation, two inputs, you have two derivatives, right? But if you have a lot more equations and a lot more inputs, you have to take a lot more derivatives. And as the model gets bigger, they also tend to get more difficult to differentiate. So once, once this goes beyond like a two by two problem, even a two by two problem with a single input, there are six derivatives. Two for x, x1, x2, one for u for each equation. That's already six. That's a pretty simple problem. So we'd like ways to do this automatically in the simulate, and that's what I'll show you today. So first of all, I'll show you how in simulate to compute a steady state solution. Because the linearize, um, we'd like to have a steady state solution. I'll teach you how to do the linearization. And then we'll go through an example. In this case, I think it might be better to go through the example together. Usually what I do is I just tell you to do it, and then I play around with my phone and stuff until you have a question. But in this case, it's a little more complicated, I think, and not so easy to do without my help. So probably the best way to do it today is I'll go through it, and you should go along. You should try to do the same thing at the same time. As usual, with anything in learning, once you know how to do this, it's not difficult. At this point, it's going to appear to be weird, right, if you know how to do it. But once you learn how to do it, you should be able to adapt it to any problem you want. And we're going to apply it to this uh, biochemical reactor problem that we like. A little simpler than the one you did for homework. Okay. So in Simulink, there's this function called trim. Okay. So it finds a solution for a Simulink model. A Simulink model means an MDL file. Right? So when you create a file in Simulink, you call it MDL. With an MDL extension, and that's what we're talking about. Okay. So here's how it's used. On the right-hand side, you have to give it the file you're talking about. The, the MDL file that you're interested in. You have to guess the steady state. Okay, so that's the steady state U, which you usually know, and this is the steady state X. It's like anything else. If you want to solve a set of nonlinear algebraic equations, you've got to guess the answer, right? And then it comes back with some answer. And we also know that the answer might depend on the guess, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so then it comes back with all this stuff associated. So it's trying to make this at zero. So these are the derivatives of your model. Those should be zero. So if you look at that vector when you're done, they'll be like 10 to the minus 12, 10 to the minus 15, and things like that, if it were. This is the dependent variables in the equation. This is the input variable. And this is if you have an output, you know, like for example, in the bioreactor problem, you said for a homework, you had an output that was the ratio of the two um, cell types. Okay? All right, I guess it was the fraction of the. All right. Um, so that's it. Right? This is how you use it. This is what it, how it works. So I'll show you how to use that. I think rather than do this, which is really this is really mind twisting because it's really hard to explain this part in words. Let's start the example. Okay. So first of all, we'd like to go through and find the steady state for the model. And here's the model of interest to us. At this point, I hope I don't have to explain this model to you. Continuous stirred tank bioreactor. Growing a cell type, one cell type, its cell density is x, grams per liter. Um, we also have, so we have one equation balanced for the amount of biomass, and we have one for the substrate that limits growth. This is nothing new here. We have different parameters in this model that include 
Um, well, so this is the growth function. You know what this looks like. This is like a um, function that the growth really increases quickly at low values of s, and then it saturates at high values of s. Okay, because eventually the cell can't consume any more um, nutrients than you provide because it doesn't have the capacity to do so. The model has this series of parameters. Here's the two models. I've chosen these parameters. These are parameters for, that are consistent with the E cell, for example. So here are the two parameters of the growth function. Okay. Here's the yield coefficient. This tells you how much biomass you get for a given amount of substrate. It's a measure of how efficient the cell is in converting the substrate into cells. This is the dilution rate, right? This is the inverse of the residence time. This is the flow divided by the volume. And this is the inlet concentration of the substrate, whatever that might be, like glucose. Okay. All right. So we've seen this problem before. We analyzed it in detail in 361. In fact, I think I took this slide from 361 almost directly copy it. So we know we can find the steady state for this analytically. Right? It's not that hard. We set these two derivatives equal to zero. We did this in 361. You find there's two steady states for this problem. One is the interesting one, one is the uninteresting one. Okay. So for this one, which I call the interesting one, you have taken, so this is the steady state solution for this set of parameters. So the substrate concentration is dropped from the, the amount you feed to about 25 grams per liter. So most of the substrate is consumed, like 95%. Okay? And you produce a lot of cells. Because right? we know in these bioreactors, you don't put any cells in the feed stream, you just put the substrate into the cells grow in the reactor. So that's the desirable steady state. Convert uh, nutrients into cells. Okay. The washout steady state is the one we'd like to try to avoid. That's the one where you feed in the substrate, it all comes out the other side, and you've made no cells. Okay. That typically happens if you flow, or it does happen, if the flow rate is too high, and so the rate you withdraw cells exceeds the rate at which they grow. So if you, take, if you remove cells from the reactor faster than they grow, eventually there will be no cells left. That's the steady state. You want to avoid this. All right, then we also did this problem. You, you may or may not recall this. So once we had this steady state, okay, we took this model and linearized it about the steady state. So these are two functions that we're not worried about an input at this point. Okay. So right, two differential equations, x and s. To find the linearized model, you have to compute four derivatives. F1, with respect to those two variables, F2. You form the linearized model, you get an A matrix, you check the eigenvalues, this is ringing a bell. I'm not going to do it. You just have to remember what I did. You find these two solutions. And this is an artifact of PowerPoint. That's supposed to be in the same order. I don't know why I decided to stretch it out. OK, so if you were to linearize the model about this steady state and find the eigenvalues, and we did exactly this in 361, you find you have two eigenvalues. And they both have negative real part, right? And we know if eigenvalues have negative real part, that steady state is stable. Okay. If you check the other steady state, this one, you see it has two positive eigenvalues, and that means that steady state is unstable. So that means the system likes to rest here, and it doesn't like to rest here. That's good. OK. So what you don't remember is how we did this. And I didn't show you, but you might recall it's a little bit laborious, right? You have to take all these derivatives. You have to find the steady state by hand. Then you have to take the derivatives by hand. You have to evaluate the derivatives by hand. You have to take the A matrix and form the characters of the polynomial. And then you have to find the roots of that. Right? And it's all kind of laborious. And this model is actually quite simple. Right? So if I gave you a model that had five differential equations, then you would take 25 derivatives. And you have a five by five matrix. And so it's getting a little unwieldy. So it'd be nice if we could automate this. And obviously we can. And that's what I'm going to do now. Okay. So I built the Simulink model. Let's take a look at this guy. Let me open it up. I don't remember what it's called, as usual. Go to the, oops, go to the right place. Bioreactor. There's probably something called bioreactor stability. Bingo. thinking. Okay, so I built this thing, okay, and that you would probably have trouble building this thing, and you wouldn't understand why you built this thing, so that's why I'm going to explain what this thing is to you, right? So it looks kind of conceptually similar to what you've seen before, right? I have an input, 
going through something that represents the process of interest and something's coming out and I'm writing that to the workspace and I'm taking the input and writing that to the workspace, but something looks weird, right? This is out, it says in and out, you've never seen that before. And the reason for that is there's something underlying this and for example, if I click on this thing, there's nothing new about this. This is the dilution rate. For this problem, I'm considering the biomass to be the output, the amount of cells produced X. But if we if we click on this thing, okay, that looks a little different, right? So you see, I have the dilution rate, but then I have it pointing to this thing that's called a port. And the reason I'm doing this is because you have to have this thing to do the linearization. Because MATLAB has to know when you linearize a model what the input to the, to the linearization is and what the output of the linearization is. And these port things represent points you can linearize between. Okay. So this again, if, if I asked you to do this problem by yourself, there'd be no way because you wouldn't even know this exists, right? So I don't know exactly where this port thing is. You know, we could play around with that. Um, let's just let's just say I did this. The, the main thing is I don't want to show you necessarily how to find the port, but what I do want to. And I don't know how to do this, and that's always a bad sign. But I'm, I'm overconfident if you know, that I can do it. Um, you have to, you have, there's a, you have to, um, what's the right term? You have to put these things together, and then you have to combine them into a single block. That's what I mentioned in showing how to do. So the first thing was a step change, was it? Where's my, this guy. There's just not enough room here. Let's say step change, that's under, um, sources, I think. Source. Um, step. Drop it in there. Okay. Now, someone once told me you could search for things. Let's see if they're right. Ports and subsystems. Oh, you see that thing? Bang. Okay. So then I, so I, and, I, and you're going to, this is going to become clearer why I have to do this. Right, I mean, in the, in the past, we would just take the step function and it would point right to the S function, right? And it would provide the dilution rate for the S function. And now it's going through this thing and then it's going there. This, this thing doesn't do anything, it doesn't have any computational purpose, it just identifies a point for when we do the linearization. So now I'm going to connect this bad boy up, and now I'm wondering, because I don't know how to do this, I'm wondering how you combine these two into one thing. See if somebody, if somebody can tell me how to do this. Uh, just right click on. Right. I, okay, they're both highlighted. Now right click the. Oh. Yeah, one of the options should be combined. Arr. Sorry. Okay. So my goal is to right. <laughs> you have to have them highlighted like this. Uh, that's what I did. Right. See, it's always had. Okay, I've got something powerful there. Do I want to create subsystem? That's what I did. Okay. Right. Well. Oh, Jesus. One, it's what you originally had. I don't know. Right. Hold on a second. I want it to look like that bad boy. Okay. I want it to be in one block. So I, don't, I don't like what you just had me do. I want to do something else. So let's, let's see what is this up here. First person that figures out how to do this, and we're only giving ourselves two more minutes to figure it out. If I don't figure it out now, I'll send out an email that won't have me do it. Right now, I'm going to tell you. Will you give me an A? So it's not create subsystem, apparently. I'm very tempted to do it again. Uh oh. That's not good. <laughs> Pretend that didn't happen. All right. Can anyone group this two things into a single block that looks like my S function that I have on the slide? You can't even see this. Hold on, and you see this too big. Resize block. Yeah, yeah. Come on, people. This one I finally need help you. So if you Why do you say do that? So you, you can do that for that. Yeah. Okay. He says search subsystem. <laughs> and I'm not going to not listen to him. Okay. Okay. I 
see it. Oh. <coughs> yeah. I will though. function block, okay, you connect the in to the inlet of that and the out to the outlet of that. Okay, I'm going to explain to you why it looks like this in a minute, and I'm just trying to explain to you what it looks like. Okay. This bioreactor basic thing I think is something we used, used before, it's, it's this file here. Okay. This is just the, I think, the example I used the first class. There's nothing new about that. Okay. So you drop one of the subsystem things in there, it already has this in and out for it, I think. Um, you put the bioreactor basic S function in there, you connect it up, and then it will you'll have this subsystem. And then once you have those two subsystems created, then you hook them up like this. Okay. okay, the key thing is you have to have these out things here because when MATLAB ultimately does the linearization, it has to have those ports available for you to define what the input and output is. Okay? So that's why it looks like this. It doesn't look, it's conceptually no different than what you've done before, it's just you have these ports here and here that allow you to do this organization. But it, S function is not going to behave any differently um, other than that. Okay, so let's see where we were here. Okay, so I'm showing you this. So that's what it looked like, right? And when you double click on that, you get this, and you double click on that. Yes, you have already seen that. I'm trying to explain to you why it looks that way. All right. So first thing, and here's the, the function. I don't. I think we know what an S function hopefully looks like now. I think you have to use this exact one. Okay. So this is just an S function that simulates the differential equations I showed you on that slide. That's how you call an S function, right? I, this S function is called bioreactor basic because I have a lot of bioreactor simulations. Typical thing here, have, define our parameters and then define all these different cases, right? Case one, evaluate the right-hand side of the equations. Um, Kate, and that's this part here. I think we've already been through this exact one. Case three, evaluate the output, which is just um, the biomass concentration. Case zero, initialize the problem. Okay, nothing, nothing new here. Nothing new and exciting. Okay? All right other cases which you shouldn't be getting. All right, so then I had this, this is what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to take this um, MATLAB, try to use this MATLAB function trim along with this um, MDL file that we have and try to find both the steady states. We already know what they are because we found them analytically, so we'll be able to recreate them in the same length, supposedly. And then use this MATLAB function to linearize, um, which I haven't talked about yet, I'll go back to that in a minute, how you linearize the model in MATLAB. And once we have this linearized model, Linearized model means a model that looks, is going to look like this. Okay. So you, 
this model shouldn't look too weird to you, at least this part, right? So in other words, when you linearize a model without an input, this is exactly what you get in 361, right? You get the linearized differential equations. Okay. When you have an input, you'll have another term involving the input, and then you'll also get an output term. Because you right, we have a, we have an equation for a particular output. It, it's simply x1. So it's not very exciting. But we'll, I'll, I'll explain this. But this is what we, we see. Okay. Once you have this model, you have this A matrix. The, determinant, the stability of the system is completely determined by this A matrix. It doesn't matter about the input. We'll talk about this later. And so once you have the A matrix you found by, using, by doing this linearization, you can check the eigenvalues of that thing. Okay. That's this part here. To see if the steady state is stable. We can linearize it about both steady states, get two different A matrices, check the eigenvalues, you should get the same result we had before. And the other cool thing that you can do is there's a function where you can automatically take a model that looks like this and find a transfer function that's associated with it. Because in the class, we usually prefer transfer functions. So that means if you have a nonlinear set of differential equations, you can linearize it to get this in basically a couple of commands. And then you can, in one command, get the corresponding transfer function. Then you can use this transfer function to do whatever you want. Design a controller, whatever. OK? All right. So again, it's probably easier if you um, follow along. So what I'm going to do is the um, following. So this command, I want to, I'm lazy. I want to copy lots of commands at the same time. <coughs> So now I'm going to make that smaller. Oh yeah, sorry. So here's the really the only commands I want to issue. So uh, just for simplicity, I'm going to clear this. So first thing I'm going to do is define, because I, I get tired of typing this thing because it's a really long word. Okay, I don't want to type it. So I'm just going to call it um, this. this MDL file I've created, right? Inside the MDL file is a file called Bioreactor Basic. The MDL file itself is called Bioreactor Stability. Okay? And I'm just defining sys to be that because I'd rather type sys than this thing. That's all. It's just for convenience. <coughs> all right, so that's cool. Now that I have that, I can issue this command, which you can't fully see. Um, hello. So this command is going to take my model, which I've defined to be sys. I'm going to give it a guess of what I think x and s are. Right? These are the two values of the dependent equipment. The steady states I'm looking for this is my guess. And I don't need to supply the input for this problem. It's always going to look like that for us. In principle, you can do weird stuff like specify one of the state variables, the input, and get the other state variable. Or you understand? You can you can compute different things, but we're always interested in, know, we know what the input is, and we just want to specify what the two state variables are, so it's always going to look like this. And then you're going to get back steady state values of x, u, which is going to be nothing but we specify in the s function to begin with, y, which is nothing but the first value of this, and then these derivatives, which would be really small. Okay, so if we issue that command, <coughs> you get the obligatory warning, which people occasionally get concerned about, I always tell them if it's a warning, don't worry about it. If it's an error, you got a problem. Okay. This is something about step size. It always seems to be concerned about the step size. So we can look at the solution here. I've called all these things x1, u1, y1, dx1, because I'm going to do the same thing for a different guess. Okay. So if you look at this, this should be the solution. That's the same steady state we found analytically. So that's a good sign. Um, it was a lot easier to find. Of course, you have to have the S function to do it, but it's a lot easier to find. U1 didn't do anything because we didn't ask it to find it. Y1 is going to be the same as, maybe, whoa. I don't know why I did that. I don't exactly know. What was the other thing called? DX1? These are the derivatives. They should be small. So you know what, you know what this means in MATLAB, right? It means this number is that times that. They're both on the order of 10 to the minus 11. They're small. That you need the variables to be small for it to be the steady state, right? Okay, so that's good. I have to see what the other guess you can choose to get the other steady state is. We know there's two steady states, I'll just try. I'll try them. Um, well, you can cheat, right? If you know the steady state, the first one is zero. I don't want to guess the exact answer. What if I guess zero and zero? 
Nope. Zeros are not usually good. Probably has a divide by zero error or something. I'm going to try one and one. A semicolon. What's up? You don't have to have a semicolon. In the brackets. Where? You have a comma yeah. between one and one. Where? Right after sys in the brackets, one one. Yeah, right there. Where the comma is, you should have a semicolon. I don't think so. That's what you have in the yeah. first example. Let's say, hold on. Hold, everyone stay calm. <laughs> oh, you, you say I need. I'm sorry. What was my famous quote? I don't think so. Okay. You need that. Well, that. Okay. Undivine variable sys, because that's because I cleared the workspace. Try again. Alright. What's x1 this time? Same as x1 was last time. So I could cheat. Like, I want this thing. This is the, the biomass, and it should be small, and this one should be big. Huh? <laughs> There's a reason they pay me the big money. <laughs> so we ran that thing. What's the next one this time? Yay. Okay. Um, this means zero, right? It's like it's because it has some numerical error, so maybe it's minus 10 to the 13th or something like that. So the idea here is that is this is the same thing we did when we found nonlinear solutions of nonlinear equations in MATLAB in 361. You, you generate guesses. Um, and different guesses give you different answers. And if you happen in this case to know the answers, it's not hard to guess one that'll give you the answer you're looking for. But in a lot of real problems, you don't know that it has two solutions or three or five or whatever, and you just have to kind of guess around. All right. So anyway, so that's how you use this to find um, the steady state. That's not hard. Assuming you can put some of my in the right place. Now, here, here's the part that is usually a little confusing to students. So now I should go back to here. I skipped this for a reason because <coughs> it was hard to understand. Okay. So it says MATLAB function uh, to linearize. Okay. It actually consists of two functions. Okay. The first function is called linearize. It's the one that actually does the linearization. So what does it do? It takes your model called sys. Okay. It takes a vector called sysio, and these are two points in the linearization that you want to linearize between. It's generated with this, with this command. Okay, so I have to come back to this command. And then it comes back and creates something that in this command is called linsys, the linearized model. Okay? We'll take a look at what that means. So usually, like, uh, when you're looking at things like these kind of descriptions, if you don't know how to do this, the description often doesn't make a lot of sense to you. Right? Like, if you want to learn how to use it, you don't know how to use it, and you read this description. When I first read it, I said, this is absolutely zero help to help me use this. How did I learn how to do this? I went and found an example on the web. And I said, oh, that's what you mean. Okay. So since I'm giving you this example, if you want to linearize a different model, you would just follow my example. You don't have to go through the torture and learning process that I did. All right. So that's what this function does. But to do this, you have to have the sysio. Okay. And the sysio is created with this man, this command. Linio, that's nice. Okay. So what does it say? It says you want to create, so this sysio, as we'll see, has to be a vector. You have to tell it this is the first point and this is the second point, and please linearize between these two things. To do this, you have to tell it the block name. Like each of those blocks has a name, by reaction, solution rate, that's the block name. Port number, it, we only have port numbers of one. Thing. Okay, and so this just tells you which port number for that block you're talking about. Then you have to say whether that is an input or output of that block. Okay, so this is extremely cryptic, right? And so let's see how you use it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal these two commands and I'm going to use them, and then I'm going to try to explain it. Let's see if I succeed. Okay, it's they they're like really long. Well, wow. they just got basically gone for it. Whatever. Okay, so if we look at this first command, okay, 
I'm trying to specify the input from which I'm going to linearize, and the second end command creates the output, and it's stuffed in a vector. The first, this is the first element, this is the second element. So you use this command. First of all, you're telling it the MDL file of interest is called bioreactor stability. Okay. Second thing you're doing is saying the block of interest is called dilution rate. <coughs> this is like a path, right? You guys use path in Windows. This is just like a path. This is the MDL file. This is the block. I want, it, I want the first port of that block, port number one, and I want this to be the input for my linearization. Okay. So what did I, well, let me just go to the second man and I'll show you what it's, go back to the diagram and show you. And I create the second one, same thing. I'm calling this the second element, use this command, bioreactor stability, now different block, bioreactor. And then I'll tell it that this is Use port number one, and that's the output for the linearization. So linearize between this thing and this thing. So all this command does, and you have to see an example, at least I had to see an example to know how to use it, is it does the following. It says, you've got this block here, okay? And so all I've done with that first command was tell it, use this point here, okay? I went to bioreactor stability, I went to this block, I went to that port, okay? So I, so I told it that. So the second command, I went to this block, and I went to this port. So when you when you issue these linearization commands, they don't the in, these things that are called in in the blocks have nothing to do with it. it. The linearization command only works on things called out. So when I said port number one for the block called dilution rate, it meant the output port for that one. In this case, same thing, that output port. So after all this, all it's doing is it knows it should linearize between the dilution rate and the output of this block. Okay. The output of this block is what we call um, X. Okay. All right. So that's something you, I think, to get familiar with and comfortably just have to use a time or two. But if you do it right, really useful. Let's see how that works. So I just wonder if we, um, I probably will regret doing this, but I'm going to see what the sysio thing actually looks like. Okay. So if you type sysio here, it tells you, not surprisingly, um, these are the two ports you've chosen. It doesn't, I guess you could in principle look at that and make sure you didn't make a mistake, but it's just regurgitating what you wanted it to do. And then you issue this command. Let's, let's, let's do this. So how does this command work? It says, please linearize my model called sys between the two points I've specified in this vector and call the resulting thing linsys. Okay. So you do that. Let's um and I gotta look at this. Oh, whatever. Let's say who's. <coughs> Alright. So you see there's something now created called Linsys. Now if you if you type Linsys or equivalently as you saw you don't put a semicolon in there, you get a bunch